Okay, hello everyone. You're at Deploy with Capistrano. Everybody having fun? <laughs> Too warm. All right, my name's Michael Priest. Uh, I'm a tech lead with Trellon, and uh, I've been working with them for about three and a half years now. I'm working with Drupal about six and a half or so. Um, I'm from Adelaide, Australia, so it's been a, a fair hike to get here, but it's good to be here. Unfortunately, things are almost over, but that's too bad. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Capistrano and a bit of an introduction to automated deployment. And I'll just kind of pretext things with um, why I got interested in Capistrano. Uh, and basically, it was uh, client concerns. Um, we needed to do a pretty complex sort of deployment where um, the client needed to review a site before it went live in, enti in its entirety in a, in a staging environment before getting pushed to multiple production servers sitting behind a load balancer. So that's kind of, I didn't really look too much around, I just knew of Capistrano and that seemed to be fine for the job. So that's why I've gone with it, but there are other options. Okay. So the point of automated deployment is to make a new version of an application available on one or more remote web servers. Uh, <laughs> Wikipedia said it, must be true. So we want to deploy our new features, new functionality, configuration changes, bug fixes, whatever that change may be, um, put it in code and hopefully we can deploy it nicely. So what I'll deal with today is just this very basic use case, but you know, Capistrano supports a whole range of, um, you know, and, and so do many other deployment tools, um, support a range of multiple server deployments and what have you. So. so I guess we'll start with how people are deploying right now. Hopefully, hopefully not that. Definitely not the, the, uh, the first one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, SCP or rsync, well, it's not, not a whole lot better, but you're probably on a command line. That's a good start. Bash scripting, well, that's kind of one step before you realize that that's not enough and maybe you want to use some sort of framework like Capistrano or Fabric or something. Um, a lot of people are just happy to, you know, log into that production server and uh, just git pull or, um, you know, if you're still using SVN. Um, some people are deploying using Aga. Um, don't know much about it myself, but and Drush is always getting new features in relation to deployment. So I'm sure I have no idea what's going on there, and it's really awesome. But we're going to look at Capstrano. Um, Acquia DevCloud and Pantheon also have some really nice tools um, for just drag and drop deployment between like a development staging and production environment, which is very nice and similar to this, but this is more about a custom solution. So if, if something like that is going to work for you and you're willing to, to pay their, their fees and what have you, rather than run your own server, um, that might be a good option too. Maybe you don't care. <laughs> um, Maybe you have some minions to do that job for you. So, um, the reasons why you want to automate this process, um, you know, it's a very repetitive process. Log into production, go through all these steps, and then tomorrow you make a change and you need to do the same thing again. That's great. Um, it's boring. Um, Coders are lazy for the most part, I think, and so we want to do it once and then never have to worry about it again. Um, humans are prone to making errors, so when we're logging into a server, I'm sure there's some of us that are guilty of doing something silly on a server. I know that I've uh, managed to wipe out a production database once, many years ago. It, it was backed up you know, within the last 24 hours. It was not a big deal, but it was some time ago. I've learned my lesson. Um, and then there's permissions issues. Um, you need to have access to that production server, and so 
perhaps um, you know on, on the smaller side of things this this permissions are too lenient and so you can log in and you know you've got root on that server and you can accidentally stuff things up very easily in uh, well, that didn't work so well uh, in the in a bigger sort of environment you tend to find that permissions are too restrictive you log into that production server and then oh I, I don't have pseudo access or, or don't have permission to rewrite those files or whatever so all this can lead to a bit of rage on when you, you face a sysadmin. Um, please fix it for me, and this will ensure. <laughs> so, the aims of automated deployment, you know, we want quick, safe. So, by quick, I mean we just want to run one command or a very limited set of commands to do our deployment. Um, safe, you know, we're thinking about permissions so that if we have a set of steps in place, they're just going to execute and nothing different will happen from the last time that we did it. Should be easy, you know, one step and efficient. So we write it once, get it right, and then after that, we start reaping those rewards of setting this up properly in the first place and, and not having to do everything manually. So, it's awesome. How do I do it? Uh, first you need to pick a tool. Um, there's quite a few hammers to get the job done. Uh, Capistrano is just one of them, but uh, it seems to be that Python is all the rage, um, given a number of these other ones available. Uh, Fabric was aimed to be very similar to Capistrano. Zappy is a, we looked at Capistrano and Fabric and we don't like it, it's too complex, everything's broken. Let's make it really simple. Uh, you can find that one on code.google.com. And Ansible is a bit of a combination of configuration management and automated deployment and code deployment. So uh, that's kind of a, a new one. And I think Four Kitchens have a good blog post about that, which might be worth checking out. Okay, so Capistrano was written in Ruby, um, originally based around uh, deploying Rails applications, um, because I'm sure that can be a bit of a pain. I don't know much about Ruby, but um, it, it sounds like people were having a lot of trouble, and so Capistrano came about to simplify that process. And what Capistrano does is build a, a set of commands locally, so from, from where you initiate the deployment, and then SSH is in to each remote server. You know, you may only have one, or you may even deploy to your local machine, but it will still SSH in locally and execute whatever commands you have queued up in a, in a task. Um, so... There's a, a few sort of aspects about automated deployment, and, and really we're just concerned with code deployment with Capistrano. You can essentially run whatever commands you want, but there's some other better tools like for configuration management or um, you know system automation like Hudson and Jenkins for, for that, and uh, Chef and Puppet are uh, configuration management tools. So, Okay, so... Really, it was just a convenient way for me to, to get the job done, um, but you know, it's, it's not limited to Ruby or anything. You can use it for deploying any sort of application. Installing it is pretty straightforward on Ubuntu. Um, I did it this way, uh, you know, and that will already install the Cap uh, Capistrano gem, but um, if you want to get it up to the latest release, you just install the, the gem f through the gem package manager, which is like Ruby's equivalent of at get or uh, peckle. Yeah. Um, I just had some other things there. Just to, you know, it was interesting to see how many other gems are available in the in that repository related to Capistrano and Drupal. You know. Might be worth having a look. Um, 
So if if you're not on Ubuntu or Debian or something similar, you know, you probably need to do something a bit more substantial to get up and running with Ruby and Rails and uh, the gems to be able to install the gems, um, which Capstrano is a gem itself. So. And you can find some links from the the wiki, which are, I've got some links at the end, which you can look at. Okay, so one thing you do need to get configured, well, it, it's not a, a hard requirement, but if you don't set up SSH keys, each time you run uh, like a set of commands or a task, um, you will be prompted for a password, which is very annoying. So I recommend setting up those SSH keys. Um, and, and you may also need it for authenticating with Git if you're using like GitHub or something, which requires a um, SSH key for authentication. So, the, I think this is going a bit slow. Okay. All right. So these are the the two sort of files that uh, you can serve with when you start using Capistrano. Uh, one's your cap file, which contains um, you know project specific requirements. So, in terms of if if you're using some plugin for Capistrano, which you can install through like the gem management tool, um, then you need to specify that in there. Um, and also you, you're able to define your own task within that cat file so that if you have some very specific tasks that are uh, you know, specific to your project, um, you would want to define them in there. Um, and also the deploy.rb, and that's where you define things like paths and passwords, users, all, all these sorts of things that are required to log in or um, you know, specify where an application is living. So the terminology can be a little bit daunting if you haven't looked at a, a, a code deployment tool before. So um, primarily you deal with roles um, and so a role is essentially a server, um, and it there could be, you know, you can assign multiple servers to a role and also multiple roles to a server. So basically, that means that when a task is executed, you know, it can be run against many servers or just one, or you know, you can mix and match as you need to. Um, there is one special thing there about the, the primary, and that's just to say that that's the primary database server. So if you specify other database servers, that's the one that Capistrano will try and deploy to when you're using Capistrano to make database changes. So a task is, is pretty straightforward. You, you give it a name. Uh, you say which hosts or which roles it applies to, so you can just not worry about the roles if you if you want. You can just specify a host directly, and then some command. I mean, this is just an example, so it's pretty pretty useless command really <laughs> for in light of Drupal. Uh, okay, so when you start using Capistrano, you need to capify your project, which creates the cap file and the deploy RB file. And these are very default sort of configurations, so pretty useless for in terms of Drupal. Um, you really need to make some changes there, a few changes to, to get up and running. But it's, you just replace them as you need to. Um, it's as simple as just running capify and then the path. So dot works just fine. Uh, and you'll see those files get generated. Uh, additionally, you can set up 
multi-stage deployment. And, and so you would just manually add these config deploy dev staging production. And you can also add tasks within those RBs as well so that you can have specific tasks related to a specific server, which could be useful, but try and write things generically so that you can reuse them. Okay, so this is where, as I said, you keep your configuration and you can set up some roles in there. So this is an example. Uh, we're setting our application, which is basically the the directory that it lives in, or for the most part, um, a repository. That's where we're pulling from, where we're cloned from, and uh, the app path is where we are deploying to. Um, which branch we want to want to be pulling against, and. Um, some of these are a little bit obscure, and you just kind of have to deal with it, unfortunately. Um, there are some strange ones down the bottom. Default run options. This one's required to uh, prompt you for a password as needed. So if you run a sudo command on a remote host, then it needs a way of prompting on your local to um, you know, receive a password back. Um, that's one little gotcha and the SSH options forward agent that's about git authentication using a, an SSH key okay so the responsibilities of the cap file load those tasks from any sort of gems that you're you know plugins for Capistrano and um, define any project specific tasks so it may look something like this. Um, these are the gems at the top. And uh, this is like what you get by default when you capify. It's basically just a way of loading those recipes by default. You know. uh, and you can comment these out if you don't want any of the standard recipes. Okay. So deploying should be as simple as just cap deploy. Just running that. Which sounds easier than all that to me. Or maybe more, depending on how many servers you have to do or, or whatever. So it sounds good in theory. Um, it does require an investment of time up front to get everything up and running, working, and you know, learning Capistrano or any deployment tool I'm sure has some learning curve you know I don't know Ruby so just some of those basic sort of things that I wanted to do were a little bit tougher just because I had to learn the syntax a bit you know or understand how Capstrano is a little bit strange about global variables like when you you can just sort of set up some variables but bringing those into scope is you know there's a little trick to it so um, Documentation tends to be a bit Ruby specific, and so it's targeted at deploying a Ruby application most of the time. But I think that that's starting to change a bit. The more you sort of Google around, you can find some more Drupal specific um, information. Um, there's quite a few links on the wiki from, uh, well, there's a link on the wiki to a Drupal specific deployment. Um, there's a Capistrano Drupal gem, which I'm going to show you later. Um, does require a bit of sysadmin knowledge and what I mean by that is when you're building a, a recipe yourself you know building writing some tasks um, the errors that you get back can be kind of obscure at times and so you're can be scratching your head a little bit and basically Google saves the day eventually so just keep googling around and you'll, you'll figure it out or um, so try and keep it simple, to start with at least, uh, is my recommendation. Um, and if you can find something that somebody else has written that works, well, run with it, because it can be a little bit 
time consuming figuring it out yourself. All right, so I'm going to try and demo this. This could be interesting. So I have two uh, virtual servers here, and um, they both have Drupal running off each. So the Adelaide server is like where it's coming from, and Munich's where it's going. And so if we, this is where our, where our app is living. So if we cap deploy. You see that it runs through a bunch of commands that have been defined in this Capistrano Drupal gem. Now this, this Capistrano Drupal gem, um, you just need to install through the, the gem installer. And it's something that um, was made by Kim Pepper from uh, previous next in Australia and so he's kind of the, the inspiration for this talk really so um, it's not perfect I found um, but works for the most part it just it's very finicky about where you configure things and make some assumptions about setting things up a certain way to begin with so uh, right so now we've made a release. Let's have a look on the other side. So this is how the production side looks. Um, we've got this releases folder, which if we look in there, we can see a, a time-stamped set of folders, which has each release in there. Um, our shared folder is uh, where our files are kept, um, files and private files. Neither of those um, get changed between releases, so they are, they're kind of put aside in a, in a static area. And um, settings PHP, that's something that won't be changed each time. It's something with production-specific settings, so you keep that aside. And the, the cache copy is basically a git checkout of uh, you know the latest. So if we in the cached copy, if I can Okay, so we can see that a bunch of releases got tagged. Um, the reason that not all of those releases are in the tags is because I came across a little bug and was debugging that and the deployment still worked but the very last step is to tag those releases and um, so that's why they're missing. So I can uh, that's it. I'm just going to show you the, the actual gem itself. So if you install it, I mean, this is probably the easiest way to find it. Just do a locate on Capistrano-Drupal. Don't do that.
Okay, so this is the Capistrano Drupal gem. Um, and so, for example, this is that tag piece of code that I that had the problem with. So this is this is a task push deploy tag, and so it was it was having some path issues. This doesn't seem quite right in this section, so I've just kind of hacked it to make sure that it changes to the right directory before it does that tag, git tag, and push the origin with that new tag. Um, Okay, so with a bit of luck, we can do a bit more demonstration and we'll try and make a change, commit it, and see what happens on the other side. So, try and make a change to a feature and export the feature and see what happens when we deploy. Um, if it ever loads. This is a very slow laptop. <laughs> and so the, the benefits um, also is uh, that like when you've done a deployment, you can do a cap rollback if something goes wrong with that deployment, and it will just take that sim link. You kind of missed this point. Um, so you see that current release is just a, a sim link to a specific release, and so on a rollback, it's just changing that sim link back to the previous release. We, we might skip that. I think it's probably not going to work. But um, all right. If this ever comes back. <coughs> Very fast computer. Well, I, okay, so I'll probably give thanks to Kim Pepper for really making a, a fair bit of effort on that Capstrano Drupal gem. It really is in need of some TLC, and um, it's, a, it's a project on GitHub, so if you want to contribute, you know, I'm sure he's more than welcome to merge some commits, uh, merge some uh, patches, and um, thanks for Trellin for, for getting me here, because it's, uh, it's a very long journey for me. <laughs> So, any questions? I wanted to ask you, so like you can do rollback, right? Okay. Yep. You can you switch the simling. Do you right. have something for the data? Uh, not with the Capistrano Drupal gem. Uh, it's not really concerned with doing a database deployment. It's just code. So, um, no, not for that instance, but um, you wrote the uh, <laughs> another project um, where we did do a whole like database dump and, you know, that's been since improved for this client project where uh, that database was restored and um, yeah, that's... So that would um, be a very nice idea if you just have a dump of the database somewhere right. and also you can roll back well. Right, so, so another thing that we did on, on that pro particular project was instead of um, like replacing the existing database, we just had like an AB database, so when you actually switch Simlink, you had a second settings PHP file which uh, 
you know, allow, and two databases sitting side by side. So when it came time to actually deploy, um, you could very quickly roll back to the previous database without having to reload a database to restore. So, as well as making backups, of course. But yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Sure. Just um, use the microphone, yeah. please. Hopefully it works. Hello. Um, uh, when um, the user uploaded images and files, is this something you should think about? Some kind of a best practice when deploying <coughs> the Kubernetes drone? Like to. Yeah. Um, are you talking in terms of like on the on the production server or, yeah. I mean. Using this particular Capstrano Drupal gem, I mean, those files are set aside. So they're not, unless Drupal has some sort of bug where it decides to delete them, you're not really in having too much of a problem. So, so it's, it's like included in the, that, that logic is already there? Well, they're just set aside. They're, they're in that. In is it, are they symlink within the symlink oh, thing? Right. So in a, they get symlinked into where they, they okay. need to be, okay. right? Yeah. Exactly, yep. So if, if you're starting from scratch, of course that functionality isn't there, but um, if you use like that Capistrano Drupal gem, you get a whole heap of features for free, but it's just a little bit finicky. Sure. You mentioned that you were uh, you, you had to hack the, the gem a little bit because of right um, something about the files not being in the right places or something. Uh, how, just how how default are the, the sort of the settings? Is it trying to do something like var dub 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 or uh, in that case, it, I think it was using a call which would have been looking in my home directory rather than actually changing into the directory. Where the where Drupal is, you know. So so when it was trying to commit something, when when it was trying to generate that tag, you know, there was no repository because it was right, sitting so, in the home. So, it was, so a, it was it was it was trying. It was a situation because of how you develop rather than say a a, a problem with the, the the gem itself. Well, I I'm not 100 percent sure. I think it it may be a problem with the gem. Um, it may be a problem with my configuration. I just haven't figured that out yet. And that's what I mean with this this particular gem, it's just a little bit finicky. And so that, w that was like the last issue that I had to resolve with it um, for this presentation. Um, really, my, my use of it for, uh, for Trellum was completely from scratch. And, and so dealing with this other deployment, which had some very special needs, so. Any other questions? Going once, going twice, three times sold. All right, thanks everyone. I think if I had my time back, I'd probably head towards one of those Python ones. Uh, one of the Python alternatives rather than Capistrano, but.